Honda enters this year's middleweight battle armed with a mildly revised CBR 600 RR. Beneath the red, white, and blue bodywork is the same tried and true 599cc inline four engine as used in the Moto2 World Championship. New wheels and the latest spec suspension pieces from Showa aim to elevate handling. But are the improvements enough to put this two-time Supersport Shootout champ back on top? Probably the easiest bike of all the bikes here to ride. It was the funnest for me. I could put that bike absolutely anywhere at any time. Um, it didn't matter where I was on the track or whether I was going fast or going slow. And uh, it's in my top three of as far as the three favorite bikes that I have. Like it is crazy how agile it is. Like coming into turns, like the bike is so maneuverable that you will actually oversteer and understeer just because the bike goes so quick in a different direction. Like when you're riding a whole bunch of different bikes, it kind of freaks you out because all of a sudden you're like, oh my God, I'm gonna go run off road because the bike turns in so quick. Or you know, I'm gonna clip the, eight, the curbing because the bike is just in a position where I didn't think it would turn that much. Well, that's the Honda. And it, once you get used to it, it's actually phenomenal. Like that bike is so crazy accurate, it's insane. <laughs> The ergonomics are very small. Me, I'm 5'11". Um, I struggled with it a little bit. It took me a while to get used to it. Uh, Motor-wise, things peppy as all can be. Good linear power um, and phenomenal brakes and high quality. Honda's always got quality stuff. You know, there's nothing to complain about on this bike, really. You know, the acceleration I'm happy with, it's not as good as the other bikes I've been riding today, but it's, it's not so poor that it ruins the experience for me. The, the Honda CBR, it just, it wants you to command it and, and it goes. It's an easy bike to ride fast and it gives, it gives good feedback. I think it could use a quick shifter as well. I, I think all the Japanese bikes could use quick shifters because, you know, when you're out here on the track running around with bikes that have them and bikes that don't, you can really feel a big difference there. Um, with that being said, I'd say it probably has the second best transmission uh, in the whole field. You know, the shifts were all very smooth, so that was good. All in all, it, it was a nice bike to ride around the track and, and didn't take a lot of effort to ride this bike. The CBR's upgraded hardware pays dividends during corner entry with extraordinary levels of maneuverability. Despite the cat-like agility, it didn't elicit the same rock-solid mid-quarter composure that we remember. It also continues to come up short in the motor department, a complaint we've expressed for years. Mid-pack super pull times and scores in key subjective categories once again kept the Honda out of the top spot. Big Red knows where it needs to improve, and now it's time to act. Yamaha made waves in the Supersport class with its revamped for 2008 YZF R6. By incorporating a variable length intake along with ride-by-wire electronics, Yamaha was able to jump ahead of the technology curve. Although other players have since caught up, the R6 is a proven track weapon, as evident by it filling 600cc race grids worldwide. second bike I rode when I was here and uh, immediately got up to speed on it quickly. All the power in it is so usable and so easy um, that I loved every part of the, the R6. Yesterday when I had to do my, my super pole lap on it, um, the lap was very easy. It was a lap where I just let the bike do a lot of the work. Thing, it's so good out of the corners, it just had horsepower. It just felt good. The mapping on the thing, just roll on the throttle. Um, there's a couple times where I was choppy with it and it still just smooths right out, smooths itself out. And the bike just, it's, it's such a great package. It's definitely a race inspired bike. You can feel that from the chassis because it is so stiff. The advantage of having a chassis that's this stiff is it makes the turning of the motorcycle very good. You know, you can pretty much turn that bike anywhere you want. You know, you can make corrections mid corner, 
you know, bring the thing back. You know, if you run a little bit wide, it's no problem to, to have the bike get right back on the line. Uh, so you can pretty much put the bike anywhere on the racetrack that you'd like. I felt like you'd have to ride it at a really aggressive level for it to do something to really excite me. I just couldn't get a good feel for it. You know, especially the big tank too. That big tank is hard for me to move around on. And for a smaller person, like ergonomics play a huge role in, in how enjoyable a track bike is. It's like five or six years old now. Like it hasn't seen any changes for five and six years. Like it, and compared to the other bikes where they're updating everything every two, three years, it just feels a little bit old. And uh, I'm just really excited for Yamaha to unveil their, their replacement for that bike. Again, the R6 is not a bad bike by any means, but it just it is just a little bit long in the tooth as compared to the other motorcycles in this in this group. The R6 rewards the rider with a more raw and visceral experience than its Japanese-built counterparts. Yet it's still more refined than the competition from Europe. Although not quite as nimble as some of the more recently updated platforms, it's still capable of laying down quick times, with both of our testers logging their third fastest Super Pole. Not bad for a five-year-old platform, but not quite enough to run at the front in this class. Triumph jump-started the middleweight sports segment with its innovative inline-three powered Daytona 675. The new 675R employs a more powerful engine, updated chassis, and the latest generation of road suspension from Olin's. The British-built bike won the last edition of our Supersport shootout and is poised to retain its crown. When I jumped on this bike, the thing I noticed about it first and foremost that I loved is the tank. I liked how skinny the tank was because I used my legs so much to steer the bike that especially under heavy braking, it really gave me some good places to get my legs and my knees to really hold myself back. The thing's got a lot of power and it's usable power everywhere. It was one of my top three bikes in the sense of being able to get right up to speed on it fast. Even when I went as fast as I did on it, I didn't feel like I was going that quick. It didn't feel like it was that much effort. It's definitely one of those that if I was thinking about racing 600s, it would, it would jump to the top of my list, I think. Being that it's got the Olin suspension on it, it's stiffer than all the other bikes. It feels more like a race bike. It gets over the bumps and, and stuff differently than the other bikes in a way that I like, but I like the stiffer fuel. Um, I don't know how it would be for the street guy, but for the track day guy, he's gonna love that motorcycle. And it's got all the trick components. This is a bike that's built for the track. It comes with the Brembo, it comes with Olin's, it comes with a slipper clutch. You know, everything about this bike says it's track ready. So out there on the track, the ergonomics are fantastic. The tank's nice and narrow. I had a lot of confidence to turn it into corners. And once you commit to a corner, like the bike's ready to carve. It just keeps going. It almost dares you to lean further. So it's confidence inspiring. And you know, that's the sensation you're looking for when you're on the track. It was very easy to increase your corner speed and keep going faster through the middle of the corners with the, with the Triumph. Also, transitioning, especially in the, in the slower sections, it seemed to flick left and right very easily. It's also a very narrow bike, so uh, you know it doesn't feel bulky or heavy. Probably the highlight of this bike, just for me, is just this triple cylinder engine. Like, it's super compact, it's really, really narrow and tiny. It's got good mid-range, it's got pretty decent top end now, revs fast. And uh, with the addition of that electronic quick shifter, it's easy to keep that thing on the pipe, zinging, pulling you forward. After riding the Triumph, it's clear that the engineers didn't stray too far from its winning formula. Due in part to its compact engine, the Daytona is highly flickable, yet stable, especially during corner entry with its new slipper clutch. An improved power band and more logical ergos made it easier to ride, but it didn't net the top lap time many had expected during Super Bowl. The 675 gave all the right vibes behind the handlebar, but mid-pack scores and key performance categories means that it relinquishes the number one spot.
No other brand has won more Moto USA Supersport shootouts than Kawasaki with its Ninja ZX6R. This year, Kawasaki further alienates the competition by upping the displacement of its inline four engine to 636 cc's. In addition, it also sources updated suspension hardware, monoblock style front brake calipers, and traction control. Will this be the year Kawasaki reclaims Supersport supremacy? hopped on it, fell right at home. The motor on the thing, it feels like a built 600. It rips. It rips out of the corners. It great on the brakes, turn in. It's phenomenal. Very confidence inspiring. Uh, Kawasaki's done their homework. They've got a great package. Um, the bike rips. The seating position on the 636 is a little bit different. You know, a lot of the bikes, you kind of sit down in them a little bit. The 636 is a little bit higher. It feels more reminiscent of a, of a race style seat position. And in turn, I think it's allowed them to lift the pegs a little bit, which gives you a little bit extra ground clearance. It's a little bit more aggressive, but for me, it felt very comfortable out on the racetrack. And, and that's what was important. It was a hard bike for me to ride. Um, it sits so tall, it felt a little top heavy. And again, you know, ergonomics are so important to me. So I really could not ever get this bike on the side of its tire, no matter what I did. It's because I think I didn't have the confidence to move my body around. Um, but I would have to say that the Kawasaki is at the top of the list for acceleration. Every gear, especially in the back straight, it had more than enough power. Now I understand why it went so good against the GSX-R 752. The lap I did on that bike yesterday was the fastest one I did on any of the bikes here. It was probably one of my easiest. It was, like I said, it was 110 degrees and it was the last bike I rode, so we were all pretty, I was pretty whipped at the end of it. It's got the motor now. It's got the handling. The suspension, it, it worked great. You know, it absorbed the bumps at Chuck Walla. It was really, really maneuverable. It was precise where the Honda usually always excels in that category of just being super easy to ride and fluid and requiring no effort. Well, this year for 2013, the Ninja ZX-6R is that bike. It's that thing you hop on, you feel comfortable, you go fast, and it's no worries. We fell in love with the Ninja from the second we pinned the throttle. Its wider power band let us run higher gears through corners, which led to ripping fast drives on exit. Add in its powerful, yet easy to modulate brakes and superbly accurate chassis, and you've got a bike that's devastatingly simple to go fast on. Top scores in six categories and a ripping fast super pole time tip the scales in the green bike's favor. Best super sport of 2013, that's the 636 powered ZX6R.